Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sal here. Marty Mamel and I are checking out a small town here in southern Illinois called Elizabethtown. It happens to be a little town. I mean little. 300. Population 300. And we're interested to see what relics, what historical relics are left of the downtown of Americana. And who knows what we'll find. So come on, join us. Across the street you can see what appears to be an old service station. The white building there with the overhang. Doesn't look like it's servicing anything anymore. Over at 214 Main are the remains of an old restaurant. Unfortunately, you can't really see in but what I can see is that they're doing renovations to the building inside. Coca-Cola seems to be a popular relic of this town. Up here you can see the Coca-Cola insignia painted on this sign. And then this building over here has Coca-Cola painted on it as well. As there's another building cross this way, zoom in on it, where you can see an old Coca-Cola sign as well at Family Package Store. Cafe's still open here. You know what they say about cafe food, it's always better than what anything you can find anywhere else. Got some motorcyclists in the bottom. So what's really cool is, as I was talking about this diner home style restaurant here and the Coca-Cola that's painted up above, there's also a large Coca-Cola mural point painted here along with a sign there. And then look at this over there. Looks like something that says the Odd Fellows. Let's go check that out. Sure enough, it is the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, Odd Fellows Rebecca's Worldwide. So I don't know if it's still currently or if that's an old sign. If you know anything about the Odd Fellows organization is that they were at one time larger than the Freemasons and included members such as Charlie Chaplin, uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt, uh, who else? Um, Wyatt Earp. So there was quite a few people that belonged to the Order of Oddfellows. And the thing that makes the Oddfellows so interesting is that in their rituals they used human skeletons and they had some esoteric symbolism that was really what they were really well known for as well. So really really interesting to find that here at this building. Marty was just telling me that he thinks this gas station was an old Sinclair or DX and he's basing that off the observation that the paint there on the brick face there is green. Just down the block from the building that houses the old diner and the Order of the Odd Fellows is the Historic Rose Hotel, which happens to be the oldest hotel in the state of Illinois, still in operation today. They, um, according to history, they built the southwest portion of this hotel in 1812. Oh, look at this old building here. Isn't that just amazing? that this historical landmark still stands today and is in, and is still in operation that to me just blows my mind before i get a shot of the historic hotel the front face just happened to notice as we we're walking past is there is a old cemetery right next to it with some really old graves Wow, these are some really old graves here. <laughs> yeah. 
and the others are just so worn, weather worn, that you can't read them. Now that's just really cool. It's 200 years old. And that's right next to the hotel, as I just said. So we're walking up on the hotel, the front of the hotel. It looks like it overlooks, I believe this is the Ohio River, it's overlooking. And according to the sign, there's a vacancy here. So you could come stay, stay at the hotel and experience a bit of history. Well, let's go look at the sign up there and see what it has to say. So according to the sign here, this point marks the beginning of an early trail traveled by a woman by the name of Anna Hobbs Bixby. She was a midwife and herb doctor. And while caring for the sick in Rock Creek, in Rock Creek community, excuse me, which is eight miles northeast of here, she discovered that the white snake root was the cause of an epidemic of milk sickness which ravaged the area around 1830. And then it also says Historic Rose Hotel has been overlooking the beautiful Ohio River at Elizabethtown since 1812. Wow, this is just really cool. And here is the sign that this hotel has been placed on a national re register of historic places. And as you can see, there's the Ohio River and what's really cool is they have a miniature statue of liberty on the rocks there. Peeking through the window we can see that the light is on and there is a, a credit card machine here. So I'm making the assumption that the place is still open. That, I mean, they claim to still be in business. It's possible that they might be doing some renovations. But who knows? You, it's really cool. The carpeting in there is a thick, dark green. And then it's got, like, I think they're called Queen's Anne's chairs back there. And then if you see, you can see there's that big, oh, what do they call them? It's a bar. It's a bar. Oh, that was really cool. It's got stained glass in it and everything. This is the front view of the old hotel, Rose Hotel. I kind of wonder, uh, we are in what's considered Lincoln country, as in Abraham Lincoln, has been well known uh, down in these parts of southern Illinois. I kind of wonder if perhaps at one point he ever stayed here. This reminds me of one of them little buildings the fishermen used by us. They paint them red like this, like a darker color than a barn is, and not very big, but no, it reminds I, me of. What do they call them? A wharf? Wharf or something, yeah, Fisherman's Wharf. Let's be curious to find out what this used to be. I don't know, butcher shop, something, I don't know, something related to the town. I mean, it's got commercial double doors in the front, whatever it was. Yeah, it looks like it's being renovated now. There's some newer construction going on inside. Marty pointed out to me that if you look up, up above, under like the carport area of this old gas station or service station, the old tin roof is still up there. How cool is that? Cha-chas. Hmm. I wonder what cha-chas used to be. Looks like an old antique store. As we're walking through the town, we're noticing a lot of buildings for sale. A lot of these old buildings are for sale. 
just kind of a shame that you come through this town and so much of it is closed down, you know, left to basically decay. It's kind of in a rusted state of decay with some of these historical buildings. And the sad thing is, is there is a lot of small towns around America where you're going to find the exact same thing, just different little bit of architecture, different little bit of a style, but pretty much you're going to find where the main streets are empty and almost abandoned in a sense. Now that's a blast from the past. Who remembers drinking Royal Crown Cola? There's an old Paps blue ribbon sign. Paps has made a comeback in recent years. Seems more of the millennials are into drinking Paps than some of the older generations. And like all small towns, there's got to be a killer dog on the loose. Just kidding. He's not on the loose. He's protecting his property though. Well, I better catch up to Marty. Oh, cool. Check that out. There's this building with elephants on the side of it called the Elephant Trunk. Antiques Collectibles. They have up on the top sign there it says Fleurs Spar Minerals Antiques Buy Sell Hunting Artifacts Glassware Furniture. And then there's a phone number. And that's kind of cool. There you have a trunk up there play on words with elephant and trunk and then there's an elephant statue down in the yard too here at the family package store you can get all your needs taken care of from groceries liquor beer wine sundries ice novelties and picnic supplies Looks like the laundromat has seen better days. As much as we'd like these old towns for time to stand still, it's unfortunate progress comes in and changes, changes happen and this is the result. Had to have been a foundry at one time. Here's something you don't see every day. An actual payphone with it still intact. Let's see if uh, there's a dial tone. Oh. Guess I won't be calling calling anybody today with this. Unless I'm calling UFOs. When is the last time you've seen gas pumps like these? Probably the early 80s. It's just really cool to walk around walk around this little town. Something that that we don't take time to do often enough, I think. I think a lot of times these small towns just get passed by. People are too busy driving, driving to their next destination and they just don't don't stop. But look at all the cool things you miss otherwise if you did it. The old public school for district number 14. Let's play a little game of I spy. I spy a kitty in the window. Do you? If so, let me know in the comments section below what color the kitty was. Driving through the residential portion of Elizabethtown, we came across this old house which happens to be for sale. And to me, it looks like something out of 
oh, I don't know, like one of them Netflix shows. I think the one that I'm thinking of is called Lock and Key or something to that effect where it's kind of like spooky, mysterious, magical happenings inside, that sort of thing. That's what that reminds me of. I mean, check out this old wrought iron gate. I mean, isn't that the coolest thing? I'll um, turn the camera around so you can get a better look at what it says. But this is just really cool that this is here. Yeah, looking at this, I definitely can picture either a witch or some sort of magic going on in this house. And then look at up by the eaves there, the intricate detailing of the wood. Not sure what that's called, but that is just really neat. And I love the color, the blue. I mean, blue's one of my favorite colors anyways, but just the way it's faded and weather-worn and then all the vines and overgrowth. Yeah, definitely the location of magic and mystery. Special thanks goes out to all our fellow sightseers here on Patreon and PayPal. Without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. You think maybe I'm odd enough to join the independent order of the Odd Fellows? Who knows? Until next time, this is Sightseeing Sally.